You may have been spared from a COVID infection, but that doesn't mean that you weren't impacted by some of the policies that were implemented back in March of 2020. And don't get me wrong, lockdowns were 100% necessary. So by now, most of us know some of the impacts of the lockdowns. Mental health issues, kids' education, addiction issues, job insecurity, financial insecurity, food insecurity, and global economic insecurity. But there's little talk about the people who were dependent or reliant on the healthcare system back in March of 2020 that were, without notice, cut off. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara, I'm a neurologic physical therapist, and on this channel we talk about anything and everything related to mobility, health, fitness mindset in the context of neurologic injury with the end goal of empowering you with as many tools as possible to take ownership of your rehab and reach your highest maximum level. And no, this isn't a video giving my opinions on the policies that were implemented as a result of the COVID pandemic, but this is a video to address some of the less talked about suffering that might be going on and how to kind of build yourself back up now that we're coming out on the other side side of this lockdown. Now, as I said, lockdowns were necessary. Reprioritizing hospital resources, 1000% necessary. But on the other hand, there are some health services that definitely improve certain people's quality of life. Most likely, if you're watching this video, you were someone that was benefiting from some of those services that were making your quality of life day to day better and then without notice, it was gone. Of course, as a physical therapist, I am primarily talking about outpatient rehab services. So I'm sure a lot of the life-saving services, and rightfully so, continued. Dialysis, cancer treatments, things like that carried on as usual, or at least I hope they did, and rightfully so, services such as physical therapy were probably put more in a category of like a non-essential service, maybe not in a hospital policy, but I would say maybe even for you as a patient, you when you were reprioritizing what you were gonna leave the house to do, I'm assuming that most likely outpatient rehab was not one of those essential services. And I think it's pretty safe to assume that most people did not think it was a big deal, including a lot of doctors and healthcare professionals. And in fact, we're still kind of fighting an uphill battle as far as doctors' perceptions of physical therapists. There are still a large percentage of doctors out there that don't really believe that we're an essential service. And they have good reason to believe that. There are still some facilities out there where they are not providing a level of care in which we were educated and our knowledge base allows us to provide. But that is a topic for another day. But here's the thing, what some people don't realize is physical therapy is not handing some on a sheet of exercises and sending them off to the corner to do exercises by themselves in a gym. And no, we don't spend our entire day giving people massages. So if you're that one person that always asks the physical therapist at a party for a massage, that fact is for you. But we're really much more than that. Beyond our scope of knowledge and what we help people with physically, which is not just giving someone a strength training program, Beyond that, sometimes we serve as a liaison between a patient and a doctor. We help to maybe explain things a little in a little bit more detail that maybe a doctor didn't have time to explain, or we answer questions that maybe a patient didn't think about while they were in a doctor's appointment. We have the time and the flexibility to answer some of those questions questions. And along those same lines, we probably are the healthcare professional that spends the most time with a patient, sometimes up to three hours a week for several months, depending on the type of facility that you go to. But beyond that, we also give our patients or we give you, we give you confidence to try new things. We help to relieve some of your fears and your anxieties around mobility. We push you during those periods where you may, be, may have lost a little bit of your mojo. And sometimes the reality of it is just going to the those physical therapy sessions is an activity in itself. You having to physically get ready, leave your home, and go to another building is the beginning of a fitness program, especially for those of you who have been were hospitalized for a long period of time. But all that being said, two weeks to flatten the curve seemed very appropriate for people to stay home and mitigate risk. But unfortunately, two weeks 
turned into two months, which turned into a year, which turned into two years, and has brought us to this point. And the reason for this video is that some of you, in the absence of regular physical therapy over the last couple of years, have declined. Not just physically, but maybe you put on a little bit of weight, or maybe you put on a lot of weight. Maybe you got out of some of your really healthy habits that you were doing and got into some really unhealthy habits. And due to no fault of your own, you weren't getting up and walking as much. You had no place to go. You probably weren't challenging yourself on different terrain, which is required or necessary every time you leave your house. And so you might perceive yourself as being declined. And if this is you, I want to debunk or I want to replace some of the negative things that you might be telling yourself. You're not lazy. You just had no place to go. And so you just had a tendency to sit a little bit more than stand and walk. And yes, you may have lost a little bit of ground. You may not feel as confident, but that doesn't mean you're back at ground zero. You are not doomed or predetermined to be in a wheelchair the rest of your life because your stroke either happened right before the pandemic or during the pandemic. And although things may be harder right now, it doesn't mean that they can't quickly get back to where you were pre pandemic. So where do you start? I would say if you're on the lower end of things, meaning that you were just barely learning how to walk or get to that point where you're walking and now you have lost all confidence, start with standing. Just stand. Stand in front of your TV. Stand in your kitchen. Use your countertop to hold you up, but just stand. That will immediately start changing that script and give you evidence that you are not going to be sitting forever. You just have to start putting little actions in place that will help to start building your confidence back up. If you're someone that was just getting off your device and you were starting to walk out in the community and you really felt like you were making this jump, I would say pull that device out. It is not a regression. It is a way of, it's a means to an end. Pull that device out, build your confidence up, if you got there once, you can get there again. So that is my advice for you to get out of this negative um, spiral that your mind might be doing just because it's not getting enough stimulation. The other thing I say is, at least in Florida, we've been open for a while, which was has really been a blessing. I know it's a controversial topic, but most of my patients have been able to get outside uh, and do normal activities uh, much earlier than a lot of other states, get some sunshine, which has a huge impact on mood. So it hasn't been as big of an impact in this state. But if your lockdowns are starting to ease up a little bit, make an appointment with someone, a friend, anything, just to get outside. Go to the store, even if you don't need to buy anything. Go to the store, just get out, explore new environments, start doing normal activities again. Wear a mask if you need to. Definitely get vaccinated, definitely uh, get boosted if you're in a high risk category, but get back out into the world. It will do wonders for your mind. Case in point, I had someone that had to take pretty much a pretty long break over a year. And when she called me to get back on the schedule, I was thinking in my head the way she was describing herself, oh my gosh, she is really bad. This lockdown really had a major impact on her mobility. And when she came in, it really wasn't that bad. Her balance was probably not as great as it was a year ago, but not horrible. Again, I thought she was going to come in, you know, using a cane, which she's not someone that uses a device. And really, it wasn't that bad. And in fact, in her case, what had happened was she was in a new location and there was a lot of uneven terrain and things, surfaces that she just didn't feel confident on. But they were surfaces we had never really addressed in therapy. So in her mind, and the reason I tell you this story is because I'm sure this is happening to a lot of you in her mind. She didn't have confidence on those surfaces. She thought she was being lazy because she wasn't going to therapy and she was making this issue. We call that kind of catastrophizing this into something that was much bigger than it actually was. So maybe just the act of you getting back out into the community and doing something might help to kind of undo some of those thoughts where you might be kind of catastrophizing or making something a little bit bigger in your head. So definitely, definitely, definitely get back out there. You have not 
permanently regressed. Remember every time before your stroke or every time before you were diagnosed with MS that if you took a break from exercising, you did not feel great when you came back to exercising, but you quickly get that endurance or that fitness level back. It is the same process. The only difference is, is because you were at a weaker state or not a really fit state most likely when this pandemic hit and you had to take this forced break, um, you know, it's just going to feel a little bit more like kind of not to use, not to keep overusing a term, but it's going to feel a little bit more catastrophic to you because you didn't start at a very fit level. So definitely keep that in mind. You can progress and you can get back to where you were. The other thing is, is that most of you do have in the U.S., you have insurance and in most cases, your benefits renew every year. So maybe you haven't had physical therapy in a really long time and maybe your insurance is based on medical necessity and a recent decline in function is a medical necessity. So even if your therapists in the past have said you don't meet medical necessity or that you've met all your goals, um, which... A lot of therapists use when you run out of benefits, but it doesn't mean you've actually met all of your goals. Um, you most likely will still benefit from therapy if you really have had a recent decline in function. So get back in to see your doctor, call your insurance company. If you have a benefit, I highly recommend. Remember, it's not just that we're helping you with physical things, but it's that all that other stuff that I mentioned above that we also kind of help you with and help you kind of get through some of these little setbacks. I call them little PT tune-ups. Hopefully you've realized this about yourself, but a lot of people were home more they weren't going out as much, they were bored, they had junk food around the house, and they were doing a lot of snacking when maybe they weren't hungry or maybe you're an emotional eater and you were eating just to kind of ignore or kind of cover up or medicate some of the emotional feelings that were negative about what was going on in the world. Whatever the case may be, if you know that you've gotten a little bit off track with your diet, and yes, I had someone recently just tell me that she just threw in the towel completely, which is fine. It's totally acceptable. It was a once in our lifetime event. But here's my suggestion to you. If you know that these things happen, you go to the kitchen, eat junk food, you don't eat healthy food, you, you're an emotional eater, these things happen, my suggestion is you throw all that food away. Whether it goes through your mouth or whether it goes in the trash, it is going to a garbage can somewhere. It is going to a dump somewhere. So remember that. It's not going to go feed the hungry people in another country if you were raised in that clean your plate era. Throw it away. It is completely acceptable sometimes, in some cases, to remove a temptation in an effort to remove a bad habit and in its place put a better habit to give you evidence that you are a healthy eater, you are a healthy person, you are someone that takes care of your body, you are fit, and all these truths become larger when you remove the temptation for the negative habits or the bad habits. Now, as far as the physical recovery goes, remember, you didn't do anything wrong. You didn't mess up. Again, I highly encourage you to get back into physical therapy. Your physical therapist is not judging you. Look around you. Everyone adopted some kind of a um, less than ideal habit during this pandemic. And anyone who tells you they didn't is lying. So no one is judging you. Get back into physical therapy first and foremost. Let them help you put a plan in place. But beyond that, you can start exercising and moving right where you are in your house. Go back and watch the series that we just completed. It was really on improving your overall fitness level, but really there were some excellent ideas on, in there on how to just improve your overall activity level in general. I will link all of the videos from the series that we just went through in the description below. The other thing I recommend is that we do these monthly lives. We do them once a month, the last Wednesday of every month. 
where you can pre-submit questions and I will answer them live. If you can't come to the live session, you will have access to the recording of the session, but I will answer every single question that I receive during that time. It's only $5 and not only will you get an answer to your question, but you'll also hear other people's questions and you'll hear my response to their questions. And there could be things that you didn't even know you didn't know that you might pick up from me answering someone else's question. And then the other thing is our gold membership. I highly, highly recommend it. It is not skilled physical therapy. It is a vault of exercises that will help you quickly and easily filter down to exercises that meet your exact need. Now you do have to have a little bit of a foundation and awareness into what some of your needs are. So if you haven't been through traditional physical therapy ever, um, this is not gonna replace that. You definitely need to be uh, the, someone who's already been kind of through the system and you already have some awareness of what issues you have going on with your movements and then you can filter through you can filter through by diagnosis you can filter through by movement problem you can filter through by body part and then there you will find movement retraining exercises you'll see progressions so you'll see some like kind of traditional strengthening exercises only modified if you're someone that has hemiplegia I highly highly recommend it to help get you back on track and give you some new ideas and some exercises that you can start doing today to add to your physical therapy program. The other thing is follow us on Instagram. That's free and we do post exercises probably about two times a week is what we try and shoot for. And then as far as the mental side of things and some of the lies that your brain might be telling you right now, sign up for our newsletter. The link is in the description below. The newsletter goes out every week and it's really focused on the mental aspect and just giving you some encouragement, sometimes giving you some tips on just how to adjust and cope and how to have the right mindset to continue to move forward. So that's another free thing that we offer. Link for that is in the description below. And then that is it for this video. I hope you guys found this one helpful. If you are in that category, share your story below. Other people do get inspiration from the stories that those of you that share when you share them. And really by sharing your story, I, I know you're helping someone else to feel like they're not the only one. If you're new to this channel and you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so that you will get notified every time I upload new videos. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I will see you in the next video.